What's going on, arcade nerds? The pie position is finally finished. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about how to set up your new pie position. And be but before that, I'm going to talk about my journey of how this finally got finished. So anyways, if you want to skip to how to install your pie position, go to this timestamp right here. But if you want to listen to all my bull crap, keep watching. So what is the pie position? Well, the pie position is a PCB that plugs directly into an Atari pole position cabinet and emulates the original board. There's no other mod no modifications you need to do. This literally plugs directly into your pole position cabinet and will play pole position and will play pole position 2. Now, it can also play other games, but I, I'm selling these configured for Pole Position and Pole Position 2. If you want to make modifications to this, in other words, add ROMs and so on, and adjust the configuration settings, you are on your own. But out of the box, this will play Pole Position and Pole Position 2. You actually go inside the coin door and press a button that's already there to switch between games. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the random stuff that happened while I was trying to get this going. This is the first prototype PCB that I, went, that I made for the pull position. As you can see, the microcontroller is on board here, and the crystal and so on, the oscillator. And I used a video amplifier and so on. And the system I was using for, to create the colors was called GERT666. And I didn't, I realized uh, this actually worked right off the bat, which was pretty cool. But I found a few errors on this board. Uh, the first error was this edge connector was backwards. And so, um, and it's actually, it's, it's my own fault. Uh, when, when I originally tested it, it was a, the harness was kind of tore up on my pole position cabinet. And I didn't even realize that my edge connector was backwards. So I'm going after the edge connector and so on. It, it didn't really work out right. Also on this board you can see I, I, I used a video amplifier and later on I found out that I did not need a video amplifier. Uh, the voltage was just fine the way it was. Um, but yeah. Oh, oh and also here's some of the downsides of this. I have to actually program this chip uh, to, to, to write what they call a bootloader. I also designed this board to use the Raspberry Pi Zero and that ended up not having enough horsepower, I found out later, to properly run pole position. Now, uh, after this board, I went with this board right here. Because one of the, re one of the issues I found with this was that uh, the audio wasn't as loud as I'd like. Now, the way the audio works on this is with pulse width modulation. And there's a low pass circuit here that cleans up the pulse with modulation, audio, and, uh, and so on. But it was too quiet, and I wasn't too happy with it. So I switched over to this, which would be revision 2. I'm sorry, this is revision 2. This was revision 2. And instead of using the GERT 666, I switched to GERT 565. Now what, is that? what does that mean? Um, well, you have red green and blue okay now what the, the now GERT 666 would have been six bits control one color red six bits control one other color blue and green and so on and with this version I switched to 565 and the reason I wanted to go with 565 is because of the, of the way the pinout worked on the board so <clears throat> in other words uh, I wanted to change where the location of the pulse width modulation for the audio was for certain reasons. And at this point I still had a video amplifier thinking I needed one. A anyways, uh, so later on I found out I didn't even need my low pass circuit because the AR2 actually has a low, which is the audio soundboard on the, uh, on the, on the original arcade machine, actually had an AR2 built in. So I was able to, to delete my AR2 circuit, I was able to delete my video amplifier circuit, and so on. Uh, also, on this revision, I corrected this. 
you see how this was backwards but anyways so after that i went to revision three now this has an error on it as well but i i found a, a pretty neat way to fix it without any errors without any terrible looking parts on the board now this was after i realized the raspberry pi zero did not have enough horsepower to really run pole position correctly so I switched to a way newer Raspberry Pi and because of that the you know the, the it, if I would have used the old board it would have covered some things up the clearances weren't really right so anyways switched to a Raspberry Pi the larger one and uh, this is also running GERT 565 which is uh, 5 bits 6 bits 5 bits for the colors and I'm, the original audio amplifier used a LM386, a dual LM386 uh, amplifiers. And there's a couple different settings for LM386. Uh, according to the original data sheet, you can get uh, 20 or 200, um, what's the word? Gain, okay? And, and I found out neither one had enough gain. So luckily, I was able to put a 2N3904 and a resistor in the locations of the LM386 chips and that fixed me right up. Uh, th th so this has uh, you know, just as good of a volume as the original uh, circuit board did. And here's some LEDs and I'm not going to bother populating on, on all the release versions because these, these LEDs were used for testing purposes. These LEDs here went, ran, ran the quadrature uh, output from the steering wheel. Now. A reason that I switched from the onboard chip to this pre-built microcontroller is because, believe it or not, it was cheaper to buy everything all completely assembled on this PCB than it was to build my own microcontroller circuit on the board. So, yeah, it's funny because this chip alone was $5 if I wanted to buy it. Well. This chip, with, with everything on it, was only uh, $2.75. So I ended up switching to this, uh, what they call the Pro Micro, to control it. Now what, the, what the Pro Micro does is it acts like a mouse. You know, a, according to like an operating system like Linux, it acts like a mouse and it acts like a joystick. Now, um, for example, when you turn the wheel, it's actually a mouse mouse input, a quadrature signal that's that's going to this. And this is this is making it a mouse signal so it can be read by the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it also has a uh, uh, analog joystick for the gas pedal. Now here's an interesting story that got me stumped for a long time. If you actually look at the pinout uh, from the cloth of of the of pole position, it shows an analog input for gas and an analog input for brake. And so um, I, I built that and MAME did not, did not like it. It did not cooperate with me no matter what. And so here I found out that the original pole position hardware, yes, uh, for Atari, yes, it was an analog input, but the actual harness was a digital input. And after finding that out, which it took me too long to find out, uh, it was, matter of fact, this was found out about three weeks ago because I just trusted the, the schematics. <laughs> and we had all these problems with brake. Why is brake not working? Main did a weird thing where if you hit the brake pedal, it'll reverse it. And then next boot, and then you could fix it in the settings. And then next boot, it'll reverse it again. And so I was having all kinds of issues. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, he's a programmer, uh, Samuli, he, uh, he, he's the one that did most of the programming for this. And he's, he's a genius. I'm so grateful for Sam, Samuel. Um, but anyways, where, where, where am I going at? I forget where I'm, where, where I'm, where I'm saying. But anyways, yeah, so it had, um, a, a, it's actually a digital input. Now, the funny thing is the Namco version of the board is an analog input. And so when I eventually make the adapter boards for the Namco version, uh, I'm going to make it, I'm going to use, let's say, a comparator or something like that, which is going to turn the analog uh, brake input into a digital brake input. 
Um, and to be honest, it, so in other words, it will make the Namco act like the brake, act like an Atari cabinet. And that's just the way I did it. And, you know, and I, I did I did a lot of things so I could save parts. And this is what I'm doing. By the way, did you see this? This, these are the programmers. Samuel I, or Samuel, Thomas Christie, David Galloway. And, uh, yeah. Now, when I originally started working on this, I made the schematics in just, you know, this is really simple schematics. The hardware is not the complicated thing here. The complicated thing is the software. Believe it or not, this software can actually upload your high scores onto a database via Wi-Fi, which is, you know, pretty cool. Uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of software tricks and a lot of software things that Samuel did to make it boot extremely fast for a Pi. You know, so it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as you turn the machine on, about about the time your monitor shows a, warms up to show a picture, it's already working. Pretty cool. Um, but I see, I thought, I assumed that the software was going to be the easy thing. It ended up being the most difficult thing of all. Um, I originally uh, found some random guy on Facebook, and I said, hey, I need something to boot and play pole position. And I says, hey, tell you what, I mean, he says, he says, it'll be easy, man. I'll get it done in like two hours and send, send you an image. I'm like, really? Sounds like a deal. So I paid the guy a hundred bucks and it turns out there was a lot more to it. There was a lot of actually MAME code that had to be altered to make it play like the original machine. Because remember, the original machine had pedals and all that. Well, um, well here's a good example. If you were to play MAME with a keyboard, uh, play pole position on MAME with a keyboard, and you want to shift, okay, you tap a key, and it'll go to high gear, tap a key again, and it'll go to low gear. But the original machine has a switch. It'll open or close depending where it's sitting. So if I were to, if I were to use the original MAME code uh, on this board, you'd have to shift, you have to move the shifter down, up, down, up, down, up, in order to shift from high to low, it was it was all awkward and weird. Anyway, so that guy, it was he he couldn't do it, and I and I totally understand. And so there was another guy that said he could do it, and I says, okay, sounds like a deal. He said the same thing. Oh man, I'll have this going in like in like an hour. So okay, so I paid him two hundred bucks, and uh, if I remember right, I don't think he ever produced anything. And so um, so then I had a buddy, Dave Galloway. Now, Dave Galloway, he wrote most, most of the code for the microcontroller to make the mouse work and so on. And now, there was a lot of upgrades we did to that original code, but Dave, he, uh, he, he really, I mean, he basically wrote the, the groundwork for that code. It was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, so Dave had a buddy and, and uh, you know, he worked on a little bit on, the, on an image and it, the image just did not work right. Uh, what else? Oh, here's something. Here's something else that's interesting. Another issue that we had with the code. Another issue. Uh, okay, uh, about two months ago, I I made a video and I put it on Facebook, and I and I had this thing working 100%. And I and I made a video. It says, "Check it out. It works. It works. I'm so happy." And so on. And it did. It worked great in my cabinet. But so, so then I brought it over to my buddy, Jeff Oler. By the way, Jeff Oler has an arcade YouTube channel called Arcade Hollywood. Check it out. But anyway, so I bring it over to Jeff Oler's house, plug it into his pole position machine, and everything went crazy. Like, none of the controls worked. All the controls did completely different things. I'm like, what is going on? And one of the issues I found was um, the biggest issue I found. Let's say... Uh, the gas is controlled by a potentiometer, right? Well, on some pole position cabinets, uh, the potentiometer was wired backwards. And then on other pole position cabinets, the potentiometer was wired the same way, but the cable was wrapped backwards on the potentiometer. See, when you press the gas pedal, it moves a cable that twists your potentiometer. So I found out that every pole position acted different. And then I found another issue where uh oh, if, if your big blue, in other words, that large capacitor in the bottom of a, of a Atari power brick, if your big blue is starting to fail, uh, uh, it, which is another interesting thing we found. 
if your big blue is going is, is on its way out it'll make the steering scroll one way or scroll the other way and not stop and in and in, it's interesting because even though even this the, even though this board takes much less current than the original board it would happen on this but not happen on the original hardware and so I was tracking that down thinking it was in my uh, uh, inverter circuit or or what I didn't really know so it turns out that um, half of that issue was a main setting um, we I had we had to separate the uh, mouse from controlling MAME settings, MAME, uh, the MAME user interface. Anyways, so that was one fix there. Um, yeah, I don't know. What else? Oh, and, and here's an, another issue I found. Some revisions of pull position had a different board for the quadrature input. So in other words, when you turn your steering wheel, you have that, uh, that little uh, wheel, encoder wheel, and it goes in, and it's read by a circuit board, right? Well, some circuit boards did not like the Pi position. Uh, I found out, was it was it the early version or the later version, Kelly? Do you remember? I can't remember. I think it was the earlier version. Okay, I think it was I think it was the early version of the encoder PCB is different than all the others. And it that went all screwy. And so my quick fix to that was I'm 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 giving everyone a little encoder PCB. I actually I, I need to retest this on the on that early early board because I may not even have to give you brand new encoder. Oh, you got one, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I did is I had to reproduce the later version of that board, and uh, <laughs> because you know some were different. But anyways, uh, long story short, I may not even have to give you these because to send these out because I have not retested this with a new software. It may actually have fixed that bug. I think that's, I think that's about it. But I, I just wanted to mention somewhere in this video that I felt terrible because the software side is completely out of my hands because I'm not a software guru. You know what I mean? I could do simplistic hardware like this, but when it comes to software, I'm, I was really out of the loop and I really didn't know what to do. And I was worried because I promised everyone that, hey, um, hey it's working, I'm going to start shipping them now. And uh, yeah, and I took, took, I took all this money and then spent all of this money on all the parts to build these things and then they didn't work. And so I was terrified. I was sick to my stomach. Like, oh man, if this doesn't pan out, I'm going to have to like sell a bunch of games or something and uh, pay everyone back. So I felt so sick to my stomach. Um, and, you know, like I said, thank God for, for Samuel for figuring everything out. And maybe I, was, maybe I was worrying too much, but, you know, I promised everyone it was done and then it wasn't done. For those of you who just got your pie position in the mail, let me tell you a few things you need to know uh, for to set it up. Um, first off, I can't include, for legal reasons, I can't include any ROMs with this with this board. I don't own the ROM code, um, so you'll have to uh, install the game ROMs yourself. Now, these ROMs can be found online. I, I'm not even going to tell you where. Hopefully, someone in the community will will point that out for you. Uh, so, but this is what you do. You, you, you get your board, remove the SD card, like this. Now stick your SD card into your computer. Once you plug in your SD card, a folder like this will show up. Go into the ROM folder and drag and drop your main ROM files here. You can also mess with additional settings in arcpi-config. In this folder you can change things like whether, whether or not you want the boot screen to show up, what type of order you want the games list to be in, and what the starting game is, and so on. But most people will just be happy enough dragging the ROMs into the ROM folder. Now before you plug in your Pi position board. Please test your power supply. 
Now, pole position 2 actually has two power supplies. Um, if you were to plug this in and the voltage would be too high, you can actually damage the microcontroller and the Raspberry Pi. You want anywhere from 4.9 to 5.2 volts. Try to get around 5 volts if you can. Um, <clears throat> if any damage is done from improper voltage, I will be able to tell. And if it's because of a bad power supply, I may choose not to replace it. Here are some pole position PCBs, or pi position PCBs, in various stages of assembly. As of now, I have done a pre-order of 100, and uh, I would say by tomorrow, or the day after, I will actually begin shipping all of these boards. They will all be finished. I did not, I purposely did not finish a few things because I was worried about the firmware updates. I didn't want to install chips and then have to remove them to upgrade the software. But yeah, so, you know, in about a day or two, they will all be shipped and I will take more orders. Oh, by the way, I'm going to take those orders on the CLOV, on CLOV. Uh, there's a forum. What is that called, Kelly? No, 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 not, not, what, not what CLOV stands for. The, uh, what was it? The thread on uh, Facebook. On Facebook. I want to keep saying Facebook. <laughs> oh, I think it's called New Pi New Pole Position Replacement PCB uh, on yes. Clove. That's what it was called. Okay, as you can see, we have a Pi Position board plugged into this pole position cabinet. Now, this literally plugs in the same way as your filter board. Uh, you can also decide to slide this into your cage. Uh, I, I did make this the same exact width as an original pole position board. So it will still slide into your cage. Oh, and I should mention that Vector Collector on Clove is actually making a Pi position switcher, which will be able to, which will be able to support the FPGA pole position uh, that's coming out someday, and uh, original hardware or the Pi position. Okay, now, let me go over some settings that may get in your way, depending on which specific harness you have in your, inside your pole position cabinet. Now, <clears throat> if for any reason the gas pedal is backwards, in other words, if you were to hit the gas and it stops the, the car, and if you were to let go of the gas, it gives gas, that is probably because either your pot was wired backwards at the factory, or the cable that wraps around your pot is backwards at the factory. And to be honest, you have about a 50-50 chance of this happening. What you do is connect a USB keyboard to the Raspberry Pi. Now, what I want you to do is, let me get this keyboard in front of me so I can show you. Hit the tab key, and where it says analog controls, what you want to do is pedal one, reverse. It says, let me zoom in a little bit. See how it says pedal one reverse? I can switch that to on or off. Escape key, escape key. Hit escape key one more time and hit exit. And that will save your settings. Now, if for any reason your car, your steering wheel turns the wrong direction. In other words, if you were to turn right and the car goes left, if you turn left and the car goes right, Hit tab. Analog controls. Dial reverse. You can switch that to on or off. Then hit escape, escape, escape again, and hit exit to save your settings. And that is it. Now, let's play some pole position. Oh, before I before I before I do that. Um, the, the, the service switch inside the coin door is what changes your games. Now, you can have any racing game that the, Pi, that the Raspberry Pi can play, which, that matches your pole position controls, of course, and you can play it. 
I mean, just about it'll play as long as the name can play it. It'll it'll work on this on this machine. Um, but it comes set up so you can play pole position and pole position too. You know the configurations. But anyways, the button inside the coin door for service, the service switch. Now it's a change game switch. So if I were to go inside the cabinet, find that button. If I could find it. I'm not looking. There we go. Now it's booting into pole position two. Okay, let me press that button again. And now we're back into pole position one. <clears throat> now, let me talk about some of the differences in MAME compared to the original hardware. As of now, the sample files. Now, uh, there's these files called sample files for MAME, okay? Now, sample files is basically a certain sound that cannot be emulated very easily. And so what they do is they, they record an original machine and, and that is the sound for MAME. Well, it just so happens in this situation for pole position, um, that sound that is recorded is the screeching tire sound when you turn the wheel. Now, the sample that, who, that someone made isn't the best quality sample. So there's a difference there. The sound for the uh, brake screech is a little funny. You, you know what I mean? Other than that, I mean, everything else, sound, everything else sounds great. I will mention this. Some of the high score gurus for pole position have told me that there is a difference in MAME compared to the original machine. And this difference is on your qualifying lap. I guess um, when you do your qualifying lap, MAME gives you a couple extra points and it's not supposed to on the original hardware. So those are the, as far as I know, the only two, two uh, real differences between MAME and uh, pole position. So anyways, let's, uh, let's hear, let's hear, and I, I'll, I'll play through this and we'll see what you guys think. So like normal, press coin. Keep in mind, the high scores can actually be saved to a database via Wi-Fi through your network. But, by the way, the sample with the 
file, a file that's a little off, the uh, break sound can actually be fixed if someone were to just record a better sample uh, audio file, which that may actually be be done here shortly. Hold on, we gotta play pole position two. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go down here. Oh. Okay, coin up. We're gonna do Fuji. stuff please subscribe thank you for watching and uh, have a good one guys hey yes you look like a real jerk well I am a corporate executive he stops exciting things from happening so what you doing well Muffy Buffy Biff jr. and I are going on our Sunday drive oh no you're not you're gonna play pole position